All right, I think we can get started. Uh, full disclaimer, uh, I hope many of you know that, but it's it's a talk, it's in the schedule, but it's actually slightly different than the regular talk. It's a birds of a feather session. So uh, thank you, chat GPT or whatever for the weird -ish image. Uh, I have a few slides, a few sort of uh, things on my mind that I will uh, uh, throw at you, but I hope this will be more of a conversation. Uh, any of, all of you are Zephyr, people or are there people more from the rest of the conference? Because I'm actually interested in the latter, if there are any people. Because it's also about sort of exchanging, and it might, you might be involved in other projects, uh, open source projects or anything really, basically talking about all things documentation. Are there things that other projects do that we could get some inspiration from? Uh, and obviously like what, what is um, missing potentially in Zephyr? Uh, there was a both last year, um, at uh, ZDS 2023 in Prague, uh, documentation both, where some topics were discussed. Um, I want to sort of give a quick update on some of the, um, the things that uh, were achieved or accomplished, accomplished by the project since then. Uh, and again, uh, this is, I mean, maybe not for you in the room, but some people might end up uh, stumbling upon the, the recording of the session or, or the slides and might find some of the things that we implemented to be useful for their own projects. So there's that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, open discussion. And thank you, Anas, for uh, advertising the talk on uh, our um, WhatsApp. Hopefully more Zephyr people will join to discuss what they think uh, we could be doing better, we could be doing more of, what are some of the things that make uh, your lives maybe as contributors, maintainers, uh, too difficult, uh, like maybe some of the documentation tooling or whatever is, uh, uh, is painful. We sh should certainly discuss that, uh, but yeah, the, some of the things um, over the past few surveys, and if you look on Discord or if you talk to people uh, at, um, uh, at conferences and whatnot, some of the complaints uh, in the past around Zephyr and its documentation have been around the fact that it's hard to navigate uh, the, the documentation. Things like I'm uh, navigating the documentation of a particular uh, subsystem. Uh, it's kind of hard to find specific samples for this subsystem. Similarly, like what are for a particular board, what are some of the, like what are the, the drivers and the peripherals that are supported? Uh, we, we lack some of that. So um, there, there have been some improvement in that regard. And another complaint was the search is useless, basically. So um, quick update on both fronts. Uh, in terms of navigability, we are, the, we are leveraging um, the fact that our documentation framework slash engine Sphinx uh, is actually quite extensible. Uh, so there's dedicated um, uh, annotations that one can use. And if you're uh, interested in contributing new code samples or maintaining uh, some uh, code area for which this uh, hasn't been adopted just yet, uh, please have a look. Um, effectively, it allows to uh, add just enough metadata to uh, the header of uh, a samples documentation uh, readme so that um, not only we have a consistent way to sort of describe, give a name and a description to each and every sample, but also a way to uh, indicate what is or what are the relevant APIs uh, that this sample basically is a, a good um, demonstration of. And so you probably didn't know or <laughs> didn't remember that there is actually a PS2 uh, driver and PS2 support in, in Zephyr and so the the one uh, sample that we have is effectively referencing the API, like the deoxygen um, identifier of the, the API group for PS2, which means that uh, to the, the point of navigability, uh, should you stumble upon the PS2 um, overview and like re reference um, API reference page, you have the blue box thingy that lists all the samples that are applicable. Not, not a big deal to some extent, but that's, uh, uh, it's, I mean, people seem to like it. We will talk a bit more about maybe how we could do things even better in terms of sort of standardizing the way uh, we document subsystems to surface even more information. I think it would be useful, like similarly to the way uh, there's now this uh, ability to quickly know about um, um, samples that are relevant. There is this one thing that you can actually see here where uh, whoever authored this page many, many years ago, I'm sure, uh, they did, and I think that was the right thing to do, they, 
they thought it would be useful for people to know what's the name of the main kconfig that turns the, the subsystem uh, and the functionality on or off, except that we have no standard way to do that. So it, it's up to the maintainers to think about uh, listing those kind of options. Maybe we can make like build some kind of um, um, infrastructure to make it more mandatory and more um, um, uh, systematic that people would list those kind of things. Similarly, I think, and kind of digging into the rest of um, uh, the conversation for, for, for later, but uh, I think it might be useful to surface better um, what are some of the dependencies, at, at least at a really, really high level, of a particular subsystem. We hear a lot, and again, back to developer surveys and just like general feedback people make on Reddit and whatnot, like Zephyr is bloated, uh, for, for the lack of, of a better word, like Zephyr is like too many layers of, uh, of dependencies, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it could help if, uh, I think, if for each subsystem or each like um, piece of functionality, we would give a sense of what it is you're pulling, if anything, when you're enabling like, the functionality. NVS, like you, you want to use non-volatile storage, like what is what is the overhead? Not necessarily in terms of like actual footprint, but more in, in terms of giving a sense of uh, whether you're going to need to enable crypto uh, mandatory, uh, as a mandatory feature. If yes, then well, maybe you don't want to use uh, the, the functionality or you want to reconsider it. Um, yeah, so, well, that's kind of a digression. We, we can talk more about that. Let's finish it up with the some of the things that were added. Um, uh, people were yeah, complaining about the search. Uh, so the, the, what we had our disposal with a Sphinx, uh, w which we still do, uh, is uh, not necessarily the best at ranking the results. So one thing we did la late uh, 2023 uh, was to add support for Google programmable search. So basically embedding uh, Google with our own uh, look and feel and our own uh, style in the documentation itself so that people can uh, search faster and more um, uh, accurately. It's still sort of uh, uh, opt out, I guess I should say, like people can still use the old uh, system if they uh, want to. But yeah, that's a sort of, that's a feature that the, the project is actually uh, funding. It's a few, maybe a couple hundred dollars a month, or something like that, uh, to be transparent here. Uh, so that's the stats. During the weekdays, there's, um, yeah, a thousand, 2,800 uh, kind of uh, queries that are being performed. As an FYI, uh, just like last year, I don't know if you remember, uh, I was also sharing those metrics. Uh, I mean, take them for what it's worth, but it's kind of interesting that the vast majority of the, uh, the kind of information that people are looking for is what you would call basic, I guess, uh, to, to some extent. Uh, ESP32 ranking fourth is also an interesting factoid. Uh, when it comes to the popularity uh, popularity of this particular platform, um, but yeah, uh, and well, and that's actually interesting also to have. Um, or, I mean, we now have access to those kind of um, uh, statistics, um, and so GPIO, top query, top search term, sort of. Uh, if you l try and search for GPIO using the old system, uh, not even the top three results were really useful. Um, now it's kind of better because you get the, the real thing as the first result. Sure, we could have fixed probably maybe the, the Sphinx um, thing uh, and build our own search engine infrastructure, but uh, that's not what we do, I think. So we'd rather uh, use what's available out there. Uh, with that, I hope we can sort of open it up uh, for, for discussion. Uh, some of the things that um, as a, a documentation manager or, or co-manager, uh, some of the things that come to mind uh, in no particular order, and I might have uh, forgotten important things, but uh, in general, I find myself uh, spending a lot of time, it feels like I'm nitpicking, frankly, when I'm doing this kind of feedback, so that's why I want to discuss it, but uh, um, making sure that our documentation is consistent is kind of tricky. We might be missing some guidelines, uh, but uh, I wonder if we want to look at some tools. I was playing with, it, with a tool the other day um, with like, one thing that I found as both a consumer of documentation or a maintainer that reviews um, new, new, new documentation, sometimes you would have a fairly long and like legacy-ish uh, documentation page which people keep adding to. It kind of shows when people just add stuff that they write in their own tone, they don't necessarily think about making sure that it fits uh, with the rest of what was already there, right? Like uh, I was, I don't, 
remember exactly what kind of PR or what kind of area it was the other day, but someone was literally adding a bullet point to a list that was talking to the developer uh, in the third tense and uh, th whatever they added was doing it like differently. And it was like, uh, you can, you can, you can, and then the fourth bullet point was doing it differently. I, I mean, maybe I'm uh, that kind of uh, uh, OCD sort of like thingy, but I think you get my point. Maybe we can have some um, either better guidelines of, of tooling, so I don't know what people think around that. Similarly, uh, or I mean, not similarly, but um, uh, do we want to do things differently when it comes to all things images? Uh, we keep obviously getting more and more in, our, in the tree. Um, like, uh, yeah, they, they, sometimes they, they are e either too big or we're ending up getting new diagrams that we cannot really make edits later on because people just submit a fancy diagram that they created with whatever tool and then that can become a challenge. Uh, and then there's, yeah, this discussion around uh, subsystem templating. I don't know, like, if, is that a good starting point? Are there other even more important topics that people have on their minds and they want to provide feedback on? Because, like, if it's going to be a monologue, we can all go and have drinks anyways, uh, probably. So, thoughts? Yes, please. To read. Yep. Uh, bricks. But and, and the reference as in like the top level URL or something more specific? I guess. Yeah. And is there a pattern of like some particular areas where questions keep coming and coming? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it feels like someone wrote the documentation because they were asked to and
Concepts should be a mandatory yeah. Yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you don't know why. Default is Google. If you if you browse the latest documentation, if you browse a say uh, 3.6, it would default to the built-in because when you browse an, an, old, an old version of the doc. Yes, it, it should. That should be the behavior. Um, yeah, come on. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, because I, I was going to say, yeah, it's there, but no, you're saying something different. Not not reporting an issue, but rather uh, acknowledging that you... Yeah, very good. So that, that answer, then I guess, is to say, hey, sometimes, you know, we can take a look at this, 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 take a Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or zero, zero, which is also an indicator of nobody ever found it, ever. Um, uh, yep, I don't know, like, there's the world maybe GDPR and whatever info we might need for that. But that, that, yeah, I like that, actually. Yes? Is somebody take notes? Taking, is somebody taking notes? <laughs> I mean, it's recorded, I guess. Yes. Yeah, good. More? Yes, please. Yep. Yeah. Map, mapping the the pages to the sort of the area they belong to. Yeah. Uh, the question is when in a put. So tell me if I'm wrong uh, or if I. Um, when a particular area seems like it could uh, something's wrong with it or like could use some improvement. Wh what's the? Who should I reach out to or like? Where, is there like a Discord channel or a, like? Is that where you kind of? So, so that I think there kind of is on on a particular page. If you see something wrong with it, you can directly like the usual problem. You can directly open uh, open an, open an issue about it. So it it sort of like gives you already sort of a, a direct link to uh, open uh, an issue, which might or might not be a good idea because you're going to effectively open a ticket. Whereas maybe you just had a question. Uh, so yeah, I guess what you're saying is maybe something else could be done to. Uh, yeah, but, it, no, but the, the point is that it might not be exactly an actual problem. It's more like something that's unclear. Um, so yeah, no, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have a good answer. Yeah. Yes.
Yeah, but just being like meh, uh, meh, it wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's it. Yeah, you know that is generally wrong. Yeah, yeah. And 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 yeah, getting started might be a really good candidate for really bad ranking. Uh, Well, yeah, 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 there are. Uh, I, I didn't, we don't have the best infrastructure to pull those numbers uh, and to exclude bots, etc. I remember doing that in the past. Uh, well, I can tell that, for example, the PDF nobody looks at because <laughs> it's of, often broken and nobody seems to, the, the PDF, like it's a page among others, I guess. But, uh, uh, but yeah, there might be, um, yeah, the stats, I think we were talking about it with uh, Stefanos and Fabio at some point, like we, would require some kind of infra to run proper stats and like GDPR compliance stats, but maybe we need that, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, so that uh, briefly, and I know there's many raised hands. Uh, briefly, Keith was uh, yeah, Keith was telling me the other day, and it might be related, uh, for each page or like subsystem documentation, uh, having some related resources, links, including like, here's a really good ZDS talk from Marty from two years ago about device three. Here's an awesome, like, if you love semaphores, <laughs> like, the, look at, right. And, and, and yeah, exactly, and so those, in like related resources would be relevant Discord channel uh, for the area. Well, I mean, we wouldn't be creating new ones. Like, I don't think that's the. Uh, If you guys don't mind using the yeah. mic, I know yeah, that sure. it's the, not necessarily the best setup, but we have people recording and just for accessibility, we're good. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'm just intrigued to hear more about your thinking around um, sort of like a, maybe developing a bot or something like that, that can actually ingest both your Discord uh, feeds as well as your documentation. Because I've noticed that like a lot of companies are starting to have bots that are trained specifically on your own, you know, on your own documentation and data set. Uh, and they're actually like pretty impressive with what they can do. So people can come in and, and that could field a lot of just like easy discussions. So you, so you mean chatbots? Like yeah, yeah. So, something that would yeah, provide suggested answers sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah. So like if you have a question about I2C, the chatbot would actually probably go, well, here's the point to the documentation. Here's a bit of example code. Yeah, it's like the let me Google that for you thing, but more. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying that there are a lot of companies are sort of heading that way with 
having that as the interface to documentation as opposed yeah, yeah, to yeah, a, yeah, a, you know, a, yeah, that. Correct, yeah. Um, uh, I think users coming to Discord, they're not looking for a bot. They're looking for somebody to, to chat with about a given subject. So feeding them to, to a chat bot and, and, and nobody then responds because, well, the chat bot won't really respond. And I, I think that will actually be a, a worse service than what we have today. And I think, I think this is digressing. It's not this topic here, this talk is not about how do we help the community, it's about how we improve the documentation. We really need, I mean, we can have bots and so on and so on, but at the end of the day, the documentation as we have it is, is, is really the source and how we, I mean, if somebody likes to print stuff or likes to open, you know, a, yeah. a, a web yeah. page yeah. and look at that, that really need, need to, to be, exist. Uh, yeah, need like to exist yeah. first in the most way possible, in the best, best form using the best infrastructure, search, and so on. And all of that, you know, Discord and, and I don't know, chatbots, et cetera. This is, this is okay, it's all nice and can be done, but first we need to deal with this, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's my job, I'm actually talking <laughs> this one. Thank you. You had mentioned that uh, you had gotten some feedback uh, about our documentation. Um, in that feedback, did anybody point to somebody that's doing it better? Is there an open source yeah, project? So, um, good, really good question. I think I actually removed some slides from uh, last ZDS, because uh, uh, with regards to, um, yeah, things being more practical there, I would need to pull, to pull it up. But, uh, I mean, yeah, free RTOS was mentioned. Uh, Nothing more. Um, I know for a fact that um, I'm looking to things like Riot OS for um, on the topic of specifically of um, boards and like answering this question, which comes quite often, which is: Is your board supported uh, in um, in Zephyr? Having and maybe now with hardware model V2, we are in a way better place to do that. But like, is Nucleo blah 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 supported? Like they have something that's arguably slightly better, like it al only allows to search through a few, a few um, criteria, but um, that I would be interested in, in improving. Don't know if Riot does it much better, um, but um, they have a, what's considered a, a good documentation in my opinion. And there might be projects that have nothing to do with autosis, which we might want to look at too. Yeah, th this is, I think, something we try to do multiple times and I remember doing something like that I, I, I showed yeah, yeah, you yeah. that yeah uh, that's where actually infrastructure becomes relevant here because if you try to do that with Sphinx that's probably I don't know if that's going yeah, to work yeah so we, we need to figure out how to go beyond the infrastructure that we have to provide this type of value yeah actually a relevant question to that is for example the APIs yeah and how we integrate ABI documentation in RST right now, and and also provide the the, the you know the oxygen information mm -hmm. as well, and uh, having discrepancies and and having things out of sync and things documented in one place but not in, in the other place and and so on and so on. Yeah, so it's it's very important that uh, at least. And probably that's actually one of the topics that need to be discussed in, in this forum is, uh, and what was discussed in the TSC meeting two, day, two days ago, is uh, like APIs and, and documentation. I mean, do we actually want to go full scale on RST and, and, and try to describe everything in an RST? Or do we want to use the power of Doxygen, which is we have and you can do a lot of things in Doxygen that I, I think I, Riot. I was going to look at him and he's, he's already nodding his head to the point of we need more like context and what is it, what is the use of such or such thing? It probably doesn't start by the API. You need a higher level of to talk about the concepts in more human sort of like practical. Yeah. Doesn't I mean, Riot I actually still use Doxygen or uh, I mean uh, Riot? Uh, I don't know. I never bother check it looks like it could be it looks like they might have everything in the oxygen actually yeah yeah that's what i thought yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I thought they had everything yeah, in that city. Yeah, looks very much like. Yeah, and that's that's actually not bad at all. Yeah, yeah. that's also an option, I guess. Yeah, so it's something. I'm not saying go completely to dox uh, to doxygen, but there are a lot of things that can be described. Then you have one single place for everything. But either way, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so speaking of doxygen, uh, you can strike a. F a balance like you could have uh, functions and struct definitions and some defines and and it integrates very well with RST. Uh, I don't know if it's being done currently like that. Uh, yes. mm, I know that uh, that's slightly di well different topic. Rust uh, does Rust has pretty good documentation and they do it uh, in a twofold way like they have this learn the rust book uh, and the actual documentation that in my opinion is very well written uh, and i don't know if it's the latest one uh, that's the book actually yeah. and the book uh, is something i wanted to raise as well like uh, since i think that uh, Zephyr is becoming like a good um, source of maybe it's not as easy as, for example, Arduino to to do stuff and teach uh, in schools, for example, or in universities. Uh, but it's still uh, quite accessible for many boards that have full support, uh, and you could do many things and uh, but the problem is that uh, some things are not uh, straightforward and if there was for example rust does it very well they have the rust embedded book that guides you like uh, here is a, a led you do a blinky here is a gpio and you can uh, and it does it um, using as an example STM discovery board, uh, which is a very accessible board. And I was thinking that maybe it could be a good idea to have some kind of a structured guide, which could be then, um, which would serve like the, um, I'm very new to, to um, to programming slash embedded, and I would like to start with this project. Yeah. As um, opposed to the current documentation, which is more like reference documentation. It is like for people who know a little bit about yeah. both programming and embedded electronics, so yeah. <laughs> what was that? You, this to work? Okay. Uh, my point is a bit different right now. Uh, okay, we have the, some documentation. Um, going back to the beginning, Michael, you, you said that maybe it is your uh, talk that your uh, the documentation may not align in one point with another. Are we actually, who is writing this documentation? Are developers? Are we actually trained to write good documentation? Do we know how to write good documentation? Are the maintainers like looking for the good documentation to be, okay, I, I want this documentation to be fixed. I want this to nicely integrate. I think that we have right now is like a mix of someone writing something, people that are not like a really fluent on, on, on yep. English, if we are yep. talking about the English documentation. So I think we have a more fundamental problem. I'm not sure how to solve it, but mm. maybe we should be aware of it. Yep, not that. Yep. Yeah, following this question, one thing that it's never really clear for me is what is the audience when you are writing a documentation, right? I'm writing a documentation for a developer that is developing a new driver for Zephyr, or I'm writing the documentation for someone that is going to use, you know, this subsystem or this part of Zephyr. So that it's also sometimes not clear, you know. Yeah, I don't know if there's a good answer to that. I think it, yeah. Yeah. I think I think the audience or the target audience really need to be uh, clarified and need to be understood. Yeah, because 
as I was saying yesterday, or was yesterday, yeah, it's, Zephyr is not a product. I mean, we are not trying to actually go and, and address a certain use case, etc. This is something that needs to be available for developers rather than, you know, uh, users. Oh, oh, it should it should deal with users, but users in the sense of I, I'm using Zephyr to do something myself. Maybe I'm not contributing back, or you know, I'm just turning an LED on, off, you know, just to try things out. Uh, but it's not, it, it sh the documentation should not go into the level of, hey, this is like a product that I bought and this is the manual of how I use it, yeah? That's because that goes into a completely different level. However, it, it I think it has its benefits, but I don't know, if, if we don't define our target, then we will have mixed Variants of the documentation, yeah, similar to uh, what said uh, was said there, and there will be no con uh, uh, consistency. And yeah. the problem that you described is that depending on the developer, the language in one single file will be completely different. And you might by be talking not only uh, uh, like in the form of talking; you will be talking to two different people yeah. uh, or persons in the same sentence sometimes yeah. if it's written by two different people. Yeah. We have five minutes, by the way, since yes, it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't have, I don't think, I mean, we can also switch gears uh, to, um, I think I would love to do more around like surfacing the capabilities of like for all the boards and SOCs that we have supported in Tree. I think I don't, I don't want people to have to navigate like tons of DTS files to figure out whether such or such thing is supported. I think it, it's documentation worthy to surface that kind of information or to put it differently. Uh, I could pick virtually any board in tree and look at this and double check with the reality and then it would be just, so at a minimum, maybe we just need to get rid of that because I'm not sure that's helping anyone, but thoughts. Well, I, I, I see where, you're, where you want to take this and you want to have, documentation that describes every feature that's supported by a given board. And, but that kind of shields the user from, from DTS. And DTS at, is so... At first, at least. Well, yeah. I think I fear it's just going to uh, sort of delay. But, uh, but that, that's also shielding the user from DTS, you would agree. Like, what, what's the point of this, then? That, that gives you a, a, quick implement, a quick overview of what's supported on this board. But if you want to dig into the details, uh, I, I don't think we'll get much from auto-generating. Uh, we, we discussed this before, and auto-generating documentation based on the DTS from the board. I think I'd much rather have people dig into the DTS and try to get familiar with, uh, with how that's done. Uh, I think even before DTS, we wanted to auto-generate that. People before we had DTS. And I don't think we ever agreed that <laughs> the way it is right now, that DT or, or auto generating is the wrong, the wrong idea. Yeah, it's just we didn't get to it. Yeah, we never got to it. I don't think this is this is describing, you know, uh, the problem with that. The first problem is it, it, this becomes out of date. It, it, I'm it, pretty sure you know so fast. Yeah. yeah, so either we provide something like this and we keep it updated, or we drop it completely. And if we want to keep that updated, the best way to do that is, and this is documentation, talking about the board, this is not talking about how do I write a driver and how, what the hell is DTS. Maybe, maybe at the end of the day, a user does not even have to look at DTS because if you have to look at DTS and understand what DTS is, then maybe we are, DTS is, is the wrong thing. We, we, you know, so th there are a lot of things that would be abstracted and described in a DTS that the user might not even, you know, care about. Yeah. So well, yeah, this is back to the sort of who is the user. But yeah, I I would hope that some users they don't have to care about DTS. Like yeah. they are actually going to write an application as just sensors are already enabled. Blah blah blah. It's a dev kit that's going to be their first two weeks into Zephyr. No right. DTS. That first two weeks. Yeah. But. Coming from your talk, Anas, Zephyr is not the product. Yeah. Zephyr is just a framework. And, and okay. if you want to use this framework, you're not going to use it on the development board. You're going to use it on the development board for finding out what kind of SOC you're going to base your product on. 
right? So eventually, we if, no, if, if, wanna... eventually, if you're going to use Cephyr, you're going to have to learn about this. Yeah, I think the problem that I'm trying to solve is I want to make sure that people actually get a chance to try Zephyr and are not are like not scared away by being like, I don't know if it's supported. I don't know where to look to know if it's supported. I'm going to look someplace else, like another vendor, another whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, but I mean, okay. So I think we are conflating the the problem, or we are trying talk, talking about something completely different. We are talking about documentation here, and I think basically this needs to be up to date if we are to document that and show that. And the best way to do this, if we have the capabilities, is to auto generate that. And one second, yeah. And I'm not saying we shouldn't document how to use DTS and how to understand DTS and how, how to change DTS and so on. That, that, that's a completely different topic. Right now I'm talking about a board which has supported features and maybe I am looking for something that I want to experiment with. And this can actually be useful, yeah, because I look at this board or, or the multiple boards that we have and I would actually go pick one that has the best support for yeah. devices and so, so on. So it better be yeah. accurate what, yeah. what you're going to And see. then, you know, this is like the entry point. Uh, then you can go deeper and start looking at how do I use DTS and, and so on and so on. So it's, 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 a, it's a, a different problem. Yeah. Either we do that or write or not do it at all. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, for auto-generating this, could we use the supported tag and in, in the board YAML, right? We have this this list of tagged items that, granted, as far as I can tell, aren't fully standardized tests, just say, you know, dependencies. So we'd have to standardize them to get this to work. But yeah, yeah. if we did, then that's literally a list of what's tested on the board right there. And if the board's not failing tests, mm -mm. it's safe to assume at least that the examples build. Yeah, yeah but this, this list is also out of sync most of the times, yeah. Okay. And actually and the idea that was to DTS. use that, to use DTS to, to populate this list as well, instead of relying on the manually maintained, supported lists in a YAML file, which is for Twister, yeah. Anyways, we are, we are out of time, yeah, just to let you know, because we yeah, have yeah. the next we session. We can continue the discussion in the meet the maintainers. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, because um, that was actually super interactive. So, yeah. thanks. Thank you.